All right, we are going to talk about aphasias. Um, aphasias most commonly are associated with stroke. They can associate with basically any sort of brain injury, but stroke is mostly where you'll be tested. Um, the two biggest aphasias are Wernicke's aphasia, which we'll talk about in this video since we'll be talking about fluent aphasias. And then in non-fluent aphasias, we'll talk about Broca's. Those are the two that you'll learn most or that you'll get tested on most often. So make sure you know those. If you take anything from these videos, take broken, Broca's aphasia, which means there's broken speech, and then word salad Wernicke's. So they can say words, but it's jumbled up like a salad. So broken Broca's, word salad Wernicke's. If you take anything from these videos, take that. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper um, that can help you do a better exam on a patient who just had a stroke and kind of figure out if there's something a little bit deeper than just Broca's or Wernicke's. Um, and then this will also help you with more advanced test questions as well. So um, we'll start with fluent aphasias. Uh, we'll discuss non-fluent aphasias in a different video. So fluent aphasias, like I said, the most common um, that you'll hear about will be Wernicke's. So Wernicke's word salad. Um, um, and the reason that that is um, important is because in Wernicke's, you can still talk. You can say words. It just doesn't make sense. So like I said, it's all jumbled. You can't comprehend and people can't comprehend you. So in this figure that I have to the right, we have Broca's area, which is the orange. I'll put a little B in there. And then Wernicke's area, which is the green. So I'm going to put the green... W here, the reason I wrote it that way is because that helps me remember that Wernicke's kind of loops around this sulci anyway right here. And so if we put a W here, we know that Wernicke's is in the back. And then if we put a B here, we know that Broca's is towards the front. And then another way I think of it is just anterior, posterior, A and B are closer together. So remember that Broca's is in the front, Wernicke's is in the back. Wernicke's aphasia is when um, that part of the brain gets taken out. And so we're just kind of going to put a big mark through there. So that means comprehension is taken out. Another thing to pay attention to and something that's important to always test is if a patient can repeat because that will differ differentiate some of these aphasias. So you need both Broca's and Wernicke's areas to be able to repeat something because you need to be able to comprehend um, what people are saying to you and people need to be able to comprehend your repetition and you also need to be able to say words so you need to be fluent. So um, for Wernicke's aphasia, you cannot comprehend because comprehension is crossed out over here on the side. You also cannot repeat because Wernicke's area is taken out. So you are still fluent because Broca's area over here on the left is totally fine, but you can't repeat, you can't comprehend. So now we'll, next we'll move to transcortical sensory. This may be one that you haven't heard of before. Um, it's a little bit more advanced, but it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So um, if you remember back to your neuroanatomy class, your motor section of your brain is more anterior towards the frontal cortex. Sensory is a little bit more of the posterior part of your parietal. So if you have transcortical sensory, if you just look at the word, cortical cortex so that makes me think a little bit higher in the brain it's not deep down where the Broca's and Wernicke's sections are and then sensory tells me that's going to be probably closer to the back so all this means transcortical sensory means you're going to have a lesion somewhere out here so you'll see in this part you can't comprehend because that comprehension arrow is taken taken away um these Wernicke's projections kind of shoot out here for you to be able to actually make the words. Um, and so if that gets taken away, you cannot comprehend. But the key is you can repeat because Wernicke's spot itself is not affected. Broca's spot itself is not affected. So technically, fluency, repetition are still intact, but comprehension is not intact. So that's why it's very important for you to test repetition um, with every exam you're doing on a stroke patient. 
So those are the first two. Conduction is one that's a little bit interesting and it's very interesting when you see it, um, but more rare. So conduction, I just think the main signals between Broca's and Wernicke's, you can't conduct. So there's going to be right down the middle, can't conduct. What's interesting is you can comprehend because comprehension is not affected. It's only the fibers in between the two and you are fluent. And so if you don't ask a patient to repeat, it could seem like they have totally normal speech. Once again, why repetition is important to ask because that's the only thing that you cannot do in conduction aphasia. And then the last one for fluent aphasias is anomia. This one's a little bit odd. For the same reason of um, make sure you specifically test specific items, so point at your watch and say, what is this? Or take out your pen and have them say the word pen. If they can't name what those objects are, but everything else is intact, then they have anomia. Anomia isn't in any specific part of the brain, but it basically just doesn't impact the region that affects fluency, repetition, or comprehension. So we can just put little dots around here so you still have you know you still have brain injury it's just not in those important spots and the only thing you can do is you can't name things so once again repetition naming very important for testing your stroke patients and for figuring out what kind of aphasia you have so stick around and we will do non-fluent aphasias in the next video